Hi everybody, it's Wendy from the Lexington Senior Center. Uh, today we're going to do about a 30 minute chair yoga class. Um, this will help with flexibility. It will also help with strength. Um, if you're someone who suffers from chronic pain um, through your joints, this will be helpful to you. It will help with um, high blood pressure. It helps reduce anxiety. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of benefits for this. So I hope that you will join me. Um, we are using a Steve Halpern yoga CD. Um, this, this class is for all levels, but we will remain seated the entire time. Um, so maybe grab a sturdy chair. You can be barefoot for this class or wear socks. Just make sure that um, you sit down first before you take those shoes off. You're not walking around with your slippery socks on. Or you can keep your shoes on. That's entirely up to you. So um, I hope you'll join me today. So we want to have a seat. We actually want to sit forward on the chair so we're not leaning into the back of the chair. Um, it's best if you're in a sturdy chair rather than in like an upholstered easy chair in your living room. But if that's where you want to be so that you'll do this workout, that's fine with me. So just find a seated position. You want your feet flat to the floor. We want to try to maintain a nice long spine. So we're going to sit just for a moment and sort of come into our space and just locate our breath. I don't want you to try to control the inhale and exhale. Just start to become mindful that you are breathing. If you'd like to close your eyes, you can certainly do that. Sometimes that helps become centered a little bit easier if we take that visual cue away. And just locate your breath. Chances are you are breathing with just the shoulders and the chest rather than breathing from the diaphragm and using those belly muscles. When we get anxious, we tend to take shallow breaths and use the shoulders. So just start to let your belly expand as well as the chest when you take your breaths in. Separate the lips just a little bit. Let that lower jaw relax just slightly. And remember, we're just starting to become mindful of the breath, not trying to control it in any way, just becoming aware that we're breathing and how the body's responding as you're taking the breath in. Open the eyes. And just let the arms fall to your sides. Maybe wiggle the fingers slightly. We'll start with just a little bit of movement to, to center ourselves. And just locating our breath. So you might be moving a little bit slower, or a little bit faster than me as we start to link the breath and the movement together. So you don't have to work exactly with me. But as I locate an inhale, I'm going to allow those arms to sweep up. The wrists are relaxed, almost like I'm painting a fence with the back of the hands. And then as I exhale, I'm going to allow those hands to work down. The elbows are soft. Just working the inhale, exhale at its own natural rhythm. painting a fence or maybe cleaning a mirror. Just nice and easy. The shoulders stay down. Just a steady breath. We'll start to smooth sand just slightly. So just side to side. Smoothing the sand nice and easy. Rotating the palms. Just allowing the breath to be natural. Separate the fingers slightly. So the weight is centered in the seat and in the feet. Just a couple more smoothing that sand. 
will start to scoop water out in front, gathering that warm water and pulling it towards the body. Just a nice, steady breath. And just doing our best to stay in the present moment. Typically, it's a lot easier to allow the body to become centered and still than the mind. So if you'll just focus on the breath, that'll help calm the thoughts. So drawing that water towards you and pulling it over the body. Draw the hands in and palms down into tabletop as if they're resting on a table. And then I'll push away. I'm going to rotate the palms up. I'm going to start to open the arm and I'm going to let the head start to rotate a bit. Follow the hand and it'll push back center. Nice and slow. We'll open. The head can follow the hand and we'll push center. We're sitting up nice and tall with a long spine. Just allowing the breath to work naturally. The chest and the belly expanding with your inhale, contracting with the exhale. Work one more on each side. to roll the shoulders a little bit. We'll work one side, rolling those shoulders towards the back of the room. And then switching sides nice and easy, focusing on the shoulder blade a little bit. And then we'll alternate shoulders, so working one side and then the other. Just maintaining that nice, steady breath. Release both shoulders down. So pressing those shoulder blades towards your tailbone just a little bit. We'll open and close the mouth two or three times as if you're yawning. Nice and big. Sometimes this can actually cause you to yawn. But that's fine. Let's rotate the head slightly, gazing over one shoulder to center nice and easy and then working the opposite side so not forcing that range of motion just working through a gentle range of motion we'll find our center position and then we'll gently tip the head to the floor as if you're gazing at the feet and then moving nice and slow back to central. And then a gentle tip back. Right back into that center position, tipping to the floor. Moving back to the middle. And a gentle tip back, we're not forcing. Moving center. We'll tip the head to one side. So working the ear towards the shoulder. Watch it, will draw the shoulder up. The shoulders stay down. We'll move back to center. We'll tip to the opposite side nice and easy. So not really working on flexibility just yet. Just trying to work through a gentle range of motion. We'll find our center position and start to circle the wrists a little bit. We'll work a few times in each direction. And we'll gently open and close the hands and even wiggle those fingers. If you tend to have arthritis in the fingers, the best thing to do is to keep them moving. The worst thing you can do is to sit and to sit still. We turn into the tin man. So you want to try to lubricate those joints and the only way to lubricate them is to move them. 
We're going to relax the arms to our side and just start to swing them a little bit, just from that shoulder joint. Nice and easy. Back and forward. We'll start to work across the body a little bit, almost like you're paddling a boat. We'll stop center, let that breath steady. We're actually gonna to scoot to the back of the chair now. So I'm gonna scoot myself back so your feet might be flat to the floor, maybe not. I am vertically challenged for those of you that know me, so. My feet are not going to be flat to the floor. I'm gonna kick out one leg and just start to do a few little ankle circles. So just a few in one direction and then we'll change direction. Sometimes you'll get a little popping in the joint. Most of the time that's nothing to worry about. Let's point and flex. A lot of times it's just air. So if we have a little bit of discomfort, that's okay, but we don't wanna have any pain. When you flex your foot back, spread your toes apart. When you point the foot, go ahead and curl those toes under. So I'm spreading the toes apart and curling the toes under. And I'll just switch legs, nothing fancy. Just circling. A few times each direction, just a good range of motion. Pointing and flexing, spreading the toes apart. Maintaining that steady breath and that long spine. And then I'll start to kick the legs out a little bit. So just bending and straightening. Working through the knee joint. I'll take the feet towards the floor. I'm going to take my right foot, I'm going to tap the ankle of the left side. The foot's going to tap the floor and then I'm going to reach up and tap a little bit higher towards the knee. So I'm tapping the ankle, the floor, and up closer to the knee and the floor just a couple of times. Turning the knee out slightly. And then we'll work the opposite side. So tapping ankle to floor, coming in towards the knee and floor. You might find that you're just lifting to mid-shin, that's fine. You do what feels right for you. We're just still warming the body, lubricating those joints. Good. We're going to scoot forward once again and take those feet flat. Relaxing those arms at our sides once again. Finding that steady breath. And we'll start to move just a little bit more. And then as we progress, we'll hold our positions a little bit longer. So when I find my nice breath, my inhale, I'll draw the arms up. And my exhale releases the arms. So almost as the, the same position that we started, we're just going to work a little bit more through that range of motion. So just a tad bigger with the arms. going to place the hands into the lap and then I'm going to hinge at the hips and come forward into my seated fold. I'm going to tuck the chin round the back and roll up nice and slow. Rolling the shoulders back, the arms sweep up. My exhale I fold forward, hinging at the hips. Then I tuck the chin, I round the back, I start at the tailbone and roll up nice and slow. Finishing with the shoulder roll. Maintaining that steady breath in and out. Typically as we fold, we like the exhale. Tucking the chin, rounding and rolling up. Rolling those shoulders. Taking that nice breath in. Exhaling and rolling down. Hinging at the hips, tucking the chin. Roll up, rolling the shoulders, taking that nice breath in, 
exhaling with the hinge, rolling up nice and slow, finishing with the shoulder roll. So as we draw those arms down this time, we're going to come into cactus. So we're going to open up nice and wide. We're almost like you look like a football goal. The fingers are spread. We're going to rotate to one side just gently. We need back to center. The elbows could be shoulder height or lower. We'll rotate the opposite side, that twist in the center. Coming back, the cactus falls. It works down into the lap. We hinge at the hips and come into our fold, rounding the back, rolling up nice and slow. We roll the shoulders. Nice breath in. On the exhale, we work halfway down into cactus. Nice steady breath. The exhale takes us into our twist. We back to center. Nice breath in. The exhale takes us into our twist. And back to center. The cactus falls. The hands work into the lap. We hinge. This time, if you'd like to, you can go lower and hands can go to mid shin. We'll go back into mid thigh, rounding the back, coming all the way up and rolling the shoulders. Nice breath in. Moving into cactus. Working the trunk rotation. Back to center. So starting to create a little bit of flexibility through the spine. Squeezing those toxins out of our internal organs. Remember, you can stay here or you can slide down to the shin or even the floor. Moving back upright, nice and slow. Starting at the tailbone, rounding and rolling up. Rolling those shoulders. Nice, easy breath in, we sweep up, we work to cactus, we rotate to one side, we back to center, we rotate opposite side, we back to center. This time we'll say the cactus will fall and work back up just a couple times. So working through that rotator cuff, the fingers are spread. This time the cactus will fall, we'll work to the left, we'll slide down nice and slow. Moving back up gently, rounding the back and rolling up nice and easy. Taking that nice breath in. This time both hands will sweep to the right side. We're going to place the hands on the right hip. And then just gently turn and gaze over your shoulder. We won't stay here long. We'll come back to center and work opposite side. Hands work left. We rotate the body. You can apply gentle pressure on the hips to help with the trunk rotation. And back to center, releasing the arms. Nice inhale. This time we'll work to the opposite side first. So we'll come in to the hips. Rotating the trunk, looking behind. Moving back to center, the breath is steady. We switch sides. On the exhale, rotate the trunk and gaze back. Moving back to center, nice and easy. We'll roll the shoulders just a couple of times. Hands will return to the lap. We'll take just a moment to check back in from head to toe, see how you're feeling. So just check in with the neck, the shoulders, the upper back, mid back, how the lower back is feeling at the moment. The chest and the belly, the thighs, the knees, the ankles, the feet. take the fingers and clasp the hands slightly and pull forward nice and slow. So we want to maintain a little bit of a rounding position through the arms, almost like we're hugging a nice big tree and separate the shoulder blades. The hands can stay here or you can lift them as much or as little as you want to. They can come overhead, but they're going to stay forward of the ears. 
So watch we don't drive the arms behind the ears. The head stays in neutral. Think about expanding through the rib cage, so creating space between each rib. We'll bring those arms back to front nice and easy. Then we'll reach around and give ourselves a nice big hug. We'll switch that arm on top. You might find that one side's a little bit easier to wrap around than the other, that's fine. We'll swing the arms open. Let's take the palms up and the thumbs back and then we'll press that chest forward, really stick the chest out. Now if you'll notice, my elbows are a little bit lower than my shoulders. That nice steady breath. Think about expanding the rib cage. We'll rotate the palms down. We'll slide the arms to our sides. We want to keep the weight distributed evenly between the feet. I'm going to take the right arm and I'm going to tip down to the right side. You want to think about the right armpit working towards the hip bone. Nice and easy. The head follows. We work back to center nice and slow. Once we're upright nice and straight, we'll work to the opposite side. Nice steady breath. Most of us will like to exhale on the way down in the inhale in our center position. As best you can, we want to keep the head in a nice straight line with the neck. Watch that you're not tipping forward. Excellent. Once we're back to that center position, we're going to scoot back in our chair once again and create a little bit more of a stable base here. The arms can relax at your side and we'll kick those legs out once again. So the back of the leg, the hamstring, is staying right against the chair. So we're just extending and bending. We'll extend the right leg out and point and flex just a couple of times. And working opposite side out, point and flex just a couple of times. Good, releasing center. We're gonna take the hands to the lap. We're gonna slide down into our forward fold. So as if you're telling me that secret, we're gonna go into a lower position. So as best we can, sliding down, allowing ourselves to fall, creating space between the vertebrae. So this should not be painful. The left hand can go into the shin, it can come up into the leg, it can go to the floor, whatever works best for you. We're gonna draw the right elbow up and then gently swing it high into an easy twist. The head can follow the hand or the head can stay down. And you can always keep the arm in close and lead with the elbow instead. We'll come back to center. Switching sides, so we wanna create some stability. The right hand can go to the floor or the shin or you can work into the thigh. We'll bring the left elbow up and then we'll start to open, rotate and twist. Remember, the hand can stay in, the elbow can lead. Working back to center, nice and easy. Hands will slide up the shin, mid thigh, start to round the back from the tailbone, coming up nice and long. Sitting up nice and tall, rolling those shoulders. Good, we'll come center with the arms. Let's take the thumbs up. So opening to the right side, we'll allow the head and the trunk to rotate with the arms. My gaze is gonna stay with my thumb. I'm gonna rotate back as much as I want to. And then I'll start working back to center, nice and easy, working slow. My gaze follows my thumb. The shoulders stay down breath just stay steady. Opening nice and easy. Beautiful.
you work the range of motion that feels best for you. Coming back to center, relaxing those arms, rolling those shoulders. Moving forward into the chair one more time. So we're going to pick up the leg and just cross it over. So I'm going to cross it and then I'm going to uncross. I'm going to cross, knee over knee, and uncross. Go cross and uncross. Just switch sides. So lifting the leg, crossing. If you can't quite get knee over knee, you can work ankle to ankle, that's fine. I'm gonna watch when you pick up the leg that you maintain your upright position. Sometimes we have a tendency to wanna to throw the body back. So I'm gonna lift and cross. We'll release center. We're gonna alternate sides, opening the leg. So I'll open side, come in, side and in. So just sliding one leg open and then the other. You'll pick the foot up off the floor if you can. Maintaining that nice, steady breath. Good, we'll relax center. Take just a moment to relax. Wiggle those toes a little bit. We're going to cross knee over knee once again, but this time we're gonna hold. So sitting up nice and tall, place the hands up high in the thigh and then tip forward with that nice straight back as much or as little as you want to. Head stays in a nice straight line with the neck. We have a tendency to tuck the chin under. So just think about a nice long spine. Breathing in and out. Moving upright by hinging at those hips, coming up nice and tall. We'll switch legs, knee over knee. The hinge at the hips, we tip forward as much or as little as you want to. So you're going to feel a release through the hips and the back here. Sometimes there's a bit of discomfort, but there should not be any pain. Breath is steady, we come right back up. We'll give the legs a little bit of a shake. We're going to cross ankle over knee. So I'm going to take the ankle and lift it up above the knee. I'm going to open my top leg as wide as I can. Now, you might not be able to get the ankle up there over the knee, so you might want to come down lower into the shin, but I want to think about opening the knee a little bit so I can get a little bit more hip opening here. The hands go on the stabilizing leg, so we're not pushing on the knee. We've got the hinge forward. Find a position that feels just a little bit uncomfortable and then try to stay there and hold nice and still so that the muscle can relax and it can start to stretch. This stretch is really important if you tend to sit a lot. We'll hinge at the hips and come up right nice and easy. And crossing the leg, working to the opposite side. Keep in mind that each side of the body is different. So this might be the side that you can really get that leg up high, or this might be the side where the foot needs to, to remain closer to the floor. The hands go on the stabilizing leg, so the leg that is on the floor. We're gonna hinge, keeping that nice long back. Find a spot that feels a little uncomfortable and just stay there and work as still as we can and focus on the breath. Breath is steady. We'll hinge upright, nice and easy. We'll uncross the leg. We're gonna take the legs wide and I'm gonna scoot back in my chair a little bit. And then I'm gonna take the legs wider, scoot back in the chair. I'm gonna scoot back and go as wide as I can. And really think about turning the knees out, sitting up nice and tall. My toes follow the knees. So the knees and toes are pointed in the same direction. 
I'm going to shift my weight just a little bit, almost like I'm on a boat and it's just barely rocking side to side, nice and smooth. Shifting the weight just slightly side to side. So releasing through the groin. It's said that we store emotional issues and energy in our hips and our groin. So releasing those areas can sometimes be painful. So we just want to try to keep the breath nice and steady. And we'll come back to center. I'm just going to slide the legs in. And then I'm actually going to slide myself over to the right side of the chair. So I'm going to sneak myself over and hold on to the chair. But I'm actually going to bring the leg off. So only half of me is seated on the chair. I'm going to kick the outside leg back and tuck the hip under slightly. Now you can flex the foot and press the ball of the foot to the floor, or you can release the toe. That's entirely up to you. We want to tuck the hip under and sit up nice and tall. So we feel the release through the hip flexor and quadricep. The outside arm can stay relaxed, or you can work halfway, or you can work all the way up if you like, but we want to try to stay upright and tall. Watch you're not leaning. We'll release nice and easy and move back to center. Of course, we're working to the opposite side. So scooching ourselves over, taking the outside leg back, tucking the hip under. So I've got the tuck of the pelvis. And I'm going to sit up nice and tall. Now, in order to get the best stretch, you really need to get that knee at least under the hip. If your range of motion is here where you're forward, you're not going to get much of a stretch. Um, just do the best you can. Tuck the hip under and remain nice and tall. Same options for your arms. You can work center or up, but the focus is really on the lower body. Just a steady breath. Allow that to relax and release. Those hip flexors can get really tight. So where that leg attaches to the body, those hip flexors can get really tight and short with all the sitting we do. We'll just slide in nice and easy and move back to center. I want to give the legs a little bit of a shake. Feet are flat to the floor. We'll release the arms to the sides. Just take a moment and check back in from head to toe, see how you're feeling. As you locate an inhale, you'll sweep those arms up. Your exhale will take those arms down, nice and easy. So allow the breath to prompt the movement. So we're painting that fence once again. Nice and easy. We'll bring those hands back into tabletop and start to smooth the sand one side and then the other. Nice and easy, rotating the palms. Breath is steady. We'll start to gather the water, draw it up, and gently splash the body with that warm water, scooping the water and drawing it up. Scooping the water and drawing it up. Once more. We're going to draw our hands into prayer. So we're going to place the palms together. Then I actually want you to create some friction. So we're going to start to rub the palms against one another. 
fast and hard, creating friction, creating warmth. The breath is steady. Really get some heat going between those hands. Once we've had that heat, palm to palm, we're going to place the hands on the knees. Close the eyes and focus on the breath just for a moment. And just feel the heat work into the knee joint. We'll draw the hands back into prayer and start to build heat once again. So it won't take quite as long to build heat between the hands this time. Really focus on that heat building. Once I hit heat, palm to palm, I'm gonna cross the arms and place them on my shoulders. Close the eyes, feel the heat work into the shoulder joint. The breath is nice and steady. Let the belly expand with your inhale. Draw the hands back to prayer one more time and start to build that heat. It shouldn't take long. This time we're going to take the palms and place them on the side of the face from the temple to the jaw. Close the eyes and allow the heat to work into the face, the temple, the jawline. Releasing the hands, we'll work back to prayer. Relax the shoulders. The eyes can be open or closed. Just really try to focus on the breath for a moment. We're not controlling it. We're just becoming aware of the inhale and exhale. Separate the lips slightly to release the tension in the jaw. We'll place the thumbs against the sternum, so at the heart center. Steady the breath. And you may continue to feel the heat build between the hands. Taking a moment to thank the body for carrying us through our day every day it works very hard for us the breath remains steady we'll open the eyes if they're not open just yet I will take this time to thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll check out some of the other videos that we've posted on YouTube. If you're viewing us through the Facebook link, you can find several videos on YouTube. If you'll go to the YouTube uh, app and then in the search bar, just type in Lexington Senior Center. That will pull up all of our videos. We hope to see you soon. We sure do miss you. Have a great day.